Those who seek consolation may find it in the science and the solace of this moment. The church is a single body. It is as strong as all the people who are gathered here within the walls of this sanctuary and those at a distance. So it is the power of all that has been dreamed and all that has been done to bring us to this moment. The church is a story. It is the story of lives interwoven, brought together in this place and in this time for the simple purpose of caring about each other. and helping one another along the arduous path from birth to death. The church is a story. The church is a unique institution in the lives of the people who attend here. The church is a story of the lives of the people who started this congregation and now of us who continue it. And with that, we light a flame in the chalice, recognizing the unique qualities that a church provides its congregants. This simple act of lighting a flame in the chalice is a meaningful one for us now and may it be for the rest of our lives. Now we go into our offering knowing that the church has its needs but also that there is a long history in this church of sharing at the 50% level everything collected for a month in the collection plate with a cause that is one that our values agree is important. There'll be more about that later in the service, but for now, the ushers will please come forward. We receive these, our gifts, 
in deep gratitude for what you are doing to help yourselves, to help your families, to help your communities, and those communities outside our realm that operate from values that are close to the ones we hold dear. May it be, and amen. We here at BUC are part of an interconnected web. We lean on each other for support in times of suffering. We lift each other up in times of joy. This is the part of our service we use as a spiritual exercise to share the joys we have to celebrate and those sorrows for, for which we seek comfort. Today, this morning, we have one submitted online, Joy, from Alyssa Gardenhire. After our visit, she says, I'm happy to share that my son was offered to play football and attend the University of Colorado. Congratulations and good luck. <laughs> Another uh, written in the book this morning is a um, sort of a joy and a sorrow. Sarah Redman is thankful for her son's continuing recovery from emergency open heart surgery. <clears throat> On the fourth Sunday of every month, we light candles to remember those who have died in that month in any year. You are welcome to light a candle for anyone that you're remembering this day or any concern on your heart. As you light your candle, you are invited to say the name of who you remember or the concern you have. You are invited to come forward in your own time using the aisle closest to the choir loft. Please remember to place your lighted candle as far back in the candle holder as you can. And we begin by lighting a candle from our chalice for the ones who are remembered by those who have joined us today via Zoom. Please come forward in your own time.
the candle and the lighting <coughs> that we have done. is a serious call of memory and hope. May we, may we take a moment <clears throat> to reflect quietly about your own experiences with death, how that has affected your lives and perhaps still affects your lives because it is such a loss to lose a loved person. Please take a moment now in silence. How is it with your soul? You are loved beyond belief. You are enough. You are precious. Your work matters. Your life matters. And you are not alone. You are part of a we. A great cloud of witnesses living and dead who have insisted that this beautiful broken world of ours is a blessing. Worthy of deep gratitude and fierce protection. Our ancestors and our descendants are beckoning us, compelling us onward toward greater connection, greater community. We have extraordinary connections with each other. We have extraordinary connections with the earth. The sun response is comfort me. Chris and I will lead the singing and we want you to join in.
We have completed the worship section for our morning service. We have a very long, very, very long tradition. It goes back so many years I can't even remember when it started of saying that we should recognize an organization that has the same values or roughly the same values that we do in this church and support that organization with half of the collection taken here during an entire month. So we recognize at this time a speaker for Samaritas. Please come forward. Good morning, everyone. <laughs> I feel so blessed to be with you today. Um, I. A lot of what you said, I think, was very important, resonated a lot of, you know, this power of we, um, the value of life, and so I just feel very blessed, you know, to have risen another day, and just to see these beautiful faces in the room, and yeah, have some time together, that, that's amazing. Um, so I do really appreciate the, the warm welcome here. Um, I, I do want to share some information. I'm coming representing Samaritas, um, which is many, many offices across Michigan. Um, my team is around like 80 people, but um, our agency is about 1,500 at this point. So we hope that you're able to meet more of them and they're able to meet more of you and hear more about your experiences and your stories. Um, before I launch into some of the work that Samaritas does. Um, just to share a little bit about my background and what kind of brings me here today, I guess. <laughs> um, what brings us in the same space. Um, I, so I am here representing our, our refugee work. Um, Samaritas does a lot of, I mean, as a nonprofit, does, and I'll get into it, a whole variety of social services. Um, but really what made me passionate about what I do, which I've been doing for about like 14, 15 years now, is um, I had the opportunity uh, 14 years ago to go to East Africa. I was doing a project in Malawi um, on the eastern side. And um, after that project, I uh, go through seven other countries in which my colleague's brother uh, was staying in the Democratic Republic of Congo. Um, so being probably pretty naive, a little bit younger than I am today, um, <laughs> I took that opportunity, um, but it actually um, changed my life, even though it was, um, <laughs> to be honest, not very safe. Uh, so that was my first time in an actual like conflict zone, um, if you are familiar with the war that's been now pushing like 30 years, more than 7 million people have, have passed in that conflict. Um, of, yeah, just being in that space for a brief time of seeing people who were fleeing war and my my soldiers and UN soldiers and, you know, like, yeah, <laughs> burned down homes and women who have been abducted and, and the stories I heard were um, quite traumatic and even when I was leaving the country getting ambushed by Burundian rebels and, you know, like, and that was just during a short time and realizing that people that was for some of them their entire life. Um, and they were so welcoming, so kind, just the most beautiful souls. Um, and I was like, if there's anything that I can do to, when they come to America to help them feel more welcome coming from this experience, I would love to do that, right? So basically that propelled my, my work. And so from there, basically dedicating the rest of my life of how do I understand, yes, like these were people who are in Congo, I was working for a few years in Lansing with people from Congo, but then very diverse population. And then hearing like, oh, here are people from Bhutan, here are people from Burma, here are people from Somalia, and oh my goodness, like it is incredible, like the atrocities that are happening in the world, but also the power of that hope and that resilience. 
Um, so I feel incredibly humbled to serve people who have undergone that. Um, you know, there's people who have unfortunately had traumas, you know, you know, maybe in this room, in this community, um, and it's just really powerful seeing people come together of like, well, how can we make today better? How can we start a new chapter, right? So I love being part of that process. So I, you know, the past 14 years dedicating myself to that, I've worked across America, I've worked overseas, just to understand as much as I can <laughs> that ongoing story. Um, so to see like, I've been refugee camps in Uganda, uh, for years in Thailand, and it's just very interesting where people see folks come to America, and I don't know, we have different perceptions, you know, like of what's on the media or maybe people we've interacted with, um, but I realize that actually, even if there's standardized international immigration processes, those experiences are completely different. <laughs> like seeing like the tarps versus like people who've been in camps for like 25 years, people, children who have grown up in camps, you know, like just totally different experiences. And then welcoming them here and be like, all right, what can we start on now? They are not a clean slate by any means. You know, people come here with incredible, we have some people who had PhDs, we have some people who have never been to school, some people who speak like, 10 languages, some people who have never been to school a day in their life, right? <laughs> we have single moms. You know, so, I mean, that to me is what is representing humanity, right? And the reason they're coming here is because amazing folks like you, like, are welcoming them and making it a positive space for them to start those next steps. And it's so amazing to see how, how that progresses. So, anyways, I'm a little bit of a geek. I love doing my, what I do. <laughs> Um, and that's why I wanted to share it with you. Um, but that's like why I, I have been at Samaritus five years now um, and absolutely find it astounding the work that Samaritus does. I mean, I've been working with all these international agencies. I've worked with you know, different nonprofits across America, seen different models. And when I came to Samaritus, I was like, <laughs> to be honest, I had worked in Kansas City for a while and people were talking about all these things. Like, I talked to my relatives in Michigan and they got this and that. And I'm from Michigan originally, but I was like, no one buys people cars. No one can pay rent that long. What are you talking about? Like, really? And then I joined Samaritans and I was like, this is actually happening. <laughs> like, that, like, this is actually true. How is this happening? So um, it is really amazing just to hear some of these things um, that Samaritans has done, for, whether it's for refugees or, um, you know, for all different kinds of demographics. And they do this, you know, with the mission of literally serving people as an expression of the love of Christ. And with that love, it is amazing to see everything, you know, that's accomplished, right? So the name, um, you know, we used to be called Lutheran Social Services, um, which changed the name to um, Samaritus, just based on that parable of the Good Samaritan, right? Um, and here we are 90 years later. <laughs> so we've been doing this for 90 years, living out that love as best we can through partners like you, right? And even just this past year, we've been able to serve 33,000 people across Michigan. And yes, I've talked about refugee work um, that we do, but we do all kinds of like foster care, adoption, um, elderly services. It's just like an array, right? And it's actually pretty amazing to see how these things overlap, right? <laughs> um, how a lot of people, when it comes down to it, people just need their basic needs. They want to live a life of dignity, right? Um, so it's really exciting to see that happen. So we are very, very pleased, you know, to work with partners such as yourself to just he listen to people's stories. Where are they at now? Some people, you know, they might be, you know, needing that foster care home. Some people have been displaced. Some be, so a lot of people need housing, food, education, you know, across all of our programs. How do we make that happen? And with that need growing ever more. Like actually, this is an absolutely historic year in immigration. We have the largest, and again, I've been doing this 14 years and it can be up and down, but this year has been absolutely historic with numbers coming in from all over the world. And, and when I ask people, you know, like some people are coming from different countries, different states, all that stuff, and I'm like, well, why did you choose Flint, Michigan, <laughs> or Ferndale, or Detroit, you know, like, and they say, everyone's telling us across America, Michigan is one of the most welcoming places. 
right? And you are taking a very active role in that. You may not even know <laughs> that you're taking an active role in that, but you are. Um, whether it's you know being a good neighbor or lending a helping hand, helping different agencies, doing the service projects that your church does. Um, so it's been very, very amazing um, to see this take place and to be able to help thousands of people now. Um, so I said I would keep it quite brief, <laughs> but I'm happy to answer any questions um, that people have. And again, I just really appreciate you welcoming me here today to see the service projects, um, just to take your time out of your busy lives, right? Like things are, <laughs> there's a lot going on. Um, so I'm happy to answer any questions um, and just feeling very blessed that I can spend, yes, the service with you and hope I get to talk with you a little bit more as we go through the service project. Is there anything else you would <coughs> like me to add? Um, sure. So, so basically, my understanding. Well, and again, you might have more information. <laughs> you might have added on from the last time we spoke. But um, my understanding is that we'll be like working to put some tags on some supplies to give families. Um, and to be honest, sometimes people think it's really pretty basic. You know, like school supplies or hygiene supplies, things like that. But I can't even tell you, like even yesterday we had um, World Refugee Day um, with hun and we celebrated with hundreds of our clients. And I just gave some kids some basic books and some of them have never had books. Right? <laughs> um, even they can't read and they're like, this is amazing, now I'm gonna learn how, <laughs> right? But it starts with that motivating factor. So like, yes, there's like some of the material needs and people are coming in with just basic items, right? And this is a way of welcoming them. Some of them, you know, we pick them up at the airport and they have so many questions. They're like, where do I buy these simple things? And where do I find it for an affordable rate? And my job, so I oversee like our workforce development program. I'm helping them to get jobs and better, better jobs. Um, you know, we work with them for at least like five years until they get their citizenship, but you know, their concern is like financially, like how am I gonna get these things? So yes, there's like the, the material aspect, you know, that you folks have been so kind to assist with today, but they know like it's tied with the spiritual, right? Like they know like there's humans behind that <laughs> that are making that happen. Um, and they just really appreciate it so much. So thank you for that regard. Yes, thank you so much again, and yes, I, let me know if you have any questions, and I will have some additional materials if you want to learn more, but thank you. Uh, well, Mary Dunn, come on up. As we move directly now into uh, an engagement, an engagement with our church, and the Samaritas. So good morning, everybody. Good morning. Our uh, work with Samaritas this month involves three aspects. One, of course, is sharing our plate donations on Sundays. Uh, we've been collecting um, personal hygiene products, uh, cleaning supplies, detergents, coats, um, socks, and those kinds of things people have been leaving in the foyer. Kim Worth will be taking those to Samaritas at the end of the month. And our third prong is what we're going to do today. So you'll notice that in the seats, there are scattered around some blank greeting cards. And this is our opportunity to welcome the people who have come to our shores. So you can pass those along. For those of you who need pens, if you don't have one with you, Mary Jo has some extra pens. I have some too. And uh, Janet has some extra cards, so if you need something, just raise your hand. And you can use our all-purpose hymnals as your writing surface. And on the screen, there'll be displayed a few possible memories. Um, welcoming, blessing, messages that might bring smiles and peace. For those of you who would like to draw pictures, feel free to do that. And our young people in the corner, if they want to take some paper or a card and um, write a message to the people who will be joining us, feel free. 
We'll collect the cards when you're finished and um, wrap, up, wrap up the service. Oh, thank you. And um, then, of course, join us in the social hall for some breakfast. Um, Christina, print or cursive for our notes. So thank you so very much. Go now into this world as a beacon of hope and joy. Go in love, go in peace. Now that our worship has ended, our service begins. May it be so, amen, blessed be. <laughs>